Hey everyone, before we get into this video, I want to explain something real quick. Comic Storian actually started as a channel known as Eligible Monster. It's our gaming channel, and the complete story idea started with me explaining the convoluted plots to some of your favorite video games, from Metal Gear Solid, Assassin's Creed, and yes, even storylines such as Injustice. Well, eventually I started doing this for comic books because I thought it would be fun to do, I didn't think there was much of a market for it, and the only other people I found talking about comic books were basically doing it on their phone camera and just talking about what happened within it and not even doing anything interesting. So I created the Complete Story series here at Comic Storian. Well, we've now gone five years and we pretty much stopped doing Complete Stories on Eligible Monster. That channel has become a location where we have gaming discussions and gaming top 10 lists. And basically me and the team just have a lot of fun talking about video games. And I decided that I wanted to start doing the video game Complete Stories again, because once again, you guys are asking me what's happening in your favorite plots. Well, I then thought about it. And a lot of our favorite games like Spider-Man, Man, Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed, even Warframe and Overwatch all have comic books now. And all of those comic books relate to the lore within the video game. Now, this is a slight problem for a channel such as mine, because when the Injustice comic ends, I then have to tell you, go to another channel, watch the Injustice storyline over there, because it doesn't matter. And that got me thinking, why don't we try doing the video game complete stories over here? Now, before you all get concerned, this isn't a let's play, it's what we are originally did, which is take the cutscenes from the games, condense them down, and tell you what actually happened within the video game. So right now, you're going to see what we did with the original Injustice when it ended over on Eligible Monster. And if this is something you guys like, maybe we'll bring it to the channel once a week or once every other week or something along those lines. Whenever it's relevant, it'll show up on the channel. And don't worry, it'll never get rid of our comic book complete stories. We're just trying to see if maybe Comic Storian is the home for all complete stories. Be it me explaining the plot to your favorite favorite video game, your favorite comic book, or even what happened in season one or two of the Flash TV show. This is where all of the complete stories should go. So now that that long winded introduction is done, enjoy the Injustice game as explained by me right here on Comic Storian. And very soon you'll probably see some more like Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed, and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think. So here's everything leading up to this moment, beginning with five years in the past. The Joker tricked Superman into killing Lois Lane and his own unborn child, and he inadvertently set off a nuclear explosion through the Joker's plans. 11 million people died in that explosion, and we see the Joker in the interrogation room with Batman demanding to know where he got the nuke. But Superman is done playing this game. He has lost his wife and his child, so he tears the wall out and he walks into the room demanding answers. But the Joker isn't about to give any, and he proceeds to taunt Superman, telling him to put him back in jail because it fits is nothing. He'll just escape like he always does. He has the destruction of Metropolis to top. So Superman grabs him, lifting him off the ground, and the Joker asks him, do you plan on loving again so I can tear that family apart as well? Superman punches through Joker's chest, with Joker still grinning. Thus, injustice started. In the comic books, we learned what happened next. Superman decided to turn the world into a military state and Batman fought against him. Five years happened with the Lantern Corps, magic getting involved, and new and old gods. But in the end, Batman couldn't beat Superman. So he came up with a plan that involved teleporting an alternate universe version of the Justice League to come to his aid. Which brings us to the start of the video game of Injustice. In this alternate universe, Joker is going to reenact the exact same plan. One where he will set off a nuclear explosion in Metropolis. But this time, it's Lex Luthor's plan to come swooping in to save the day becoming the hero. Batman discovers this and using the watchtower teleports down to the Joker and the rest of the heroes begin to swoop in to try and stop him. But this time, there's a blinding white light and suddenly Batman finds himself in a very different metropolis, surrounded by soldiers. Batman throws down a smoke grenade and he allows himself and Joker to escape. And as he watches the guards, he realizes, I'm in a nightmare. Meanwhile, over in Gotham, the other world version of Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Aquaman, and Green Arrow arrive, and they realize they aren't home anymore. Realizing that they have no idea what's going on, if this is an alternate timeline or a dimension, they split up with Wonder Woman and Green Arrow going to Gotham to see what's going on. Aquaman heads over to Atlantis, and Green Lantern heads over to Ferris Airfields to recharge his ring. Following Green Lantern to Ferris Airfield, he discovers that evil Cyborg and Raven are torturing Deathstroke after they captured Deathstroke when he stole the plants to the Mother box in the final comics. Green Lantern beats down the confused Cyborg and Raven and he frees the Deathstroke to find out what's going on. But before he can get any concrete answers, Wonder Woman calls him back to Gotham because she's found Sinestro. Sinestro manages to drop both Green Arrow and Wonder Woman, but that's when Green Lantern arrives and puts him back in his place. 
But to make things a bit more confusing, the first doppelganger shows up as Hal Jordan, the Yellow Lantern, arrives to confront his Green Lantern counterpart. Green Lantern kicks his own ass, leading to no further questions as he knocks out Yellow Lantern Hal. Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and Green Lantern all run into an alley, with Green Arrow wondering if there are any good guys left in his universe, and that's when they run into Bruce Wayne of the Injustice universe. Meanwhile, Aquaman goes down into Atlantis just as Flash and Shazam arrive to finalize a deal that they had going with Arthur Curry of the Injustice universe. Arthur is finally going to give up Atlantis to Superman, but Aquaman drops both Flash and Shazam, and that's when he meets his own doppelganger. They enter into a debate over giving up Atlantis to Superman, and then in the fight, all time is suddenly frozen as Ares arrives. After being defeated, he explains what happened. The insurgency must have brought the alternate universe versions of themselves here because all of the other superheroes who stood against Superman are mostly dead. Ares is tired of his power being drained due to a lack of conflict, so he sends Aquaman to the rest of his team. And Aquaman, Green Arrow, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern all end up with Injustice Bruce Wayne. With the alternate Justice League at the Insurgency, Batman explains why he took those members of the Justice League. Because he has a kryptonite laser capable of disabling Superman. These heroes are needed here because Green Arrow is already dead in this world, and Wonder Woman, Hal, and Aquaman have all sided with Superman. But the story can't go that smoothly, as Batman from the good universe is still chasing the good universe's Joker through the streets. Joker somehow gets the better of Batman due to an existing injury, but before he can officially kill him, Yellow Lantern, Hal Jordan, and Hawkgirl both land thinking that they found Bruce Wayne, the leader of the insurgency, not realizing this is the alternate Batman. They take him away while the Joker watches, and that's when he meets up with Harley Quinn, now going by the name Harleen, and she isn't too happy that someone's impersonating her puddin'. But after he shows her that he's the real Joker, or at least a version, Harleen brings him off to meet the Joker clan, which is the continuing memory of the Joker. Superman shows up to see the duplicate Batman and begins to ask him why he's even here. But before they can get any answers, Joker begins to speak to his clan of Joker followers until the regime shows up and the battles begin. Seeing problems arising, Harley puts in a call to Bruce Wayne to get some help from the insurgency. But after Joker takes out both Hot Girl and Damian Wayne, Bruce Wayne arrives demanding to know why Harleen brought Joker here. But after seeing Joker along for the ride, the proper universe's Justice League begin to ask, where's Batman? Meanwhile, back in the proper universe, Superman, Cyborg, and Flash have been trying to figure out where their friends went, and once they do, they're going to be working on how to get them home. Bruce Wayne begins to bring the proper universe members of the League to his Batcave, which is where he's keeping the kryptonite laser, and while this is going on, Flash begins to use his cosmic treadmill back in the proper universe to try and pull his friends back. The cosmic treadmill begins to overload, and Cyborg gets pulled into the parallel universe. Deathstroke and Lex see him, and they think that he's the evil version Victor Stone, and after a fight, he finds out what's going on, and he joins up with the insurgency. But that's when things get even more interesting. Superman and Wonder Woman went back to the Batcave to see why Bruce Wayne would risk coming back here after all of this time, and as he feels momentarily weakened, he uses his microscopic vision to see fragments of kryptonite, and he realizes Bruce has something. So, Superman decides to make a public statement that he has finally captured Batman and he's going to publicly execute him. Obviously a plan to draw out the Injustice version of Bruce Wayne, because the only one that he actually has is the duplicate version of Batman. The plan shifts over to Cyborg and Deathstroke begrudgingly going to the Hall of Justice and going into the Watchtower to take control of the teleportation system. But as Cyborg gets to work, Catwoman appears and figures out that it's not the real him, and once she's beaten, the evil Victor Stone arrives. Both Cyborg and Victor begin to try and hack into each other until both hacks are broken and they begin to fight it out. The real Cyborg wins over Victor, and Deathstroke returns. While this is happening, the rest of the insurgency is beginning to break into the prison where Batman is being kept, with Bruce Wayne leading the charge. Bruce finally gets to get back at Catwoman for revealing his base's location, which led to the death of Batwoman, and then he fights against Damian, bringing a close to the father-son battle that has been raging on for five years. The fights between the insurgency and the regime continue until Superman himself arrives. As Bruce and Green Arrow try to get Batman out of the prison, that's when Superman approaches the two of them again, and as he confronts them, he sees them vanish and he realizes that the Watchtower has been taken over. He flies straight up to try and stop it, only to have the Watchtower explode in his face as Deathstroke has set off a bomb. While this is all going on, Lex has decided to turn the Kryptonite laser into a weapon again, and he's decided that he has to be the one to use it to bring it against Superman because he's the only individual that Superman doesn't know is in the insurgency, and he can't let Injustice Bruce Wayne die because he's the face of the insurgency. So he calls out Superman, and then he aims his laser. 
only to be stunned by Shazam. Superman lands on the ground and furious that his best friend would go against him, murders Lex. And then as he realizes that he just killed one of his best friends, he begins to use his super hearing to hear everything. It finally awakens his eyes to how humanity sees him, that they are tired of him doing what he does. They're tired of his militaristic ways. Realizing the world doesn't want him, he decides to try and destroy Gotham and Metropolis to give them an example that they don't stand against him. Shazam can't believe that Superman is about to push the limits and actually destroy the cities. So, using his heat vision, Injustice Superman murders Shazam. Once he leaves, Barry Allen of the Injustice world is finally tired of all of this, and using his speed to get out of the base, he joins the Insurgency. As he shows up at their base, he ends up fighting against Green Arrow before convincing Green Arrow that he has switched sides. Barry explains that Superman is about to level the cities of Gotham and Metropolis, and then he intends to go to the other world to destroy the Duplicate's worlds. The proper universe's Justice League explain that they want to fight against this evil Superman, and Bruce insists that they need to go home. But they have a better idea. They should bring the proper universe's Superman here to fight against the evil Injustice Clark Kent. At that moment, the regime breaks through the walls and all-out war breaks out. During this fight, Ares takes the good universe's Wonder Woman to the island of the Amazons to inform her that Clark intends to use the Amazons to conquer Metropolis, which brings Wonder Woman to blows with Raven and Diana of the Injustice world. Once she wins, she convinces the rest of the Amazons to stand with her in the insurgency. During all of this, Bruce Wayne and Batman begin to argue about bringing the proper universe of Superman over because Bruce Wayne doesn't want to trust another Superman. But after they battle, he's convinced, and they get Superman here. Battles begin to happen all over with the Atlanteans fighting the now insurgent Amazons and the regime fighting against the insurgency. And once Superman arrives, he begins to drop each member of the regime. It eventually leads to Superman versus Injustice Clark Kent. After all of this, Injustice Superman finally confronts what he was five years before this. They look at each other, and Clark tells him, I am this world's savior. I protect it. That's what's happening out there? Protection? Disobedient children will be punished. Children, we're not gods. We don't get to decide who lives and who dies. The decision is mine. It became mine when the Joker turned me into a weapon of mass destruction. And you judge me? The two of them then enter their final fight. And once Superman drops his evil counterpart, and just as Superman tells him that fear is the only thing that they'll understand. The good universe version of the League arrives and so does Bruce Wayne. And it's over. After five years, it's over. The regime is arrested and Flash turns himself in. But no one is killed. They have put evil Superman into a red kryptonite cell to render him powerless as nothing more than a mortal man facing his punishment. Except his eyes glow red, showing us this isn't really over. And there you have it, guys. That is how we explain video games over on our gaming channel. Now, what do you think? Do you think that this deserves to live here with the rest of the Complete Story series? I am quite aware none of you want Let's Plays, so don't worry. Those will never come to this channel. If you ever want to see us playing video games, the few of you who do, go check us out on the Elder Monster Gaming Channel or on our Twitch channel. That's where we do that kind of a thing. This is more comic books, pop culture. That's what we do here at Comic Story, and that's not going to change. We will explain things to you. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this, and I will talk to you next time right here.